It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and today's episode of the Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Squarespace. Mm. Turn turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's start this show. Schultz. What's up, baby? What did you what did you see this week that you found positively brilliant? Or what did you see this week that you thought, what a fucking idiot? Yo, you know what I think is positively brilliant? Talk to me. You might disagree with me on this. Talk to me. Um canceling the NBA season. Why? I think it's a really rare time in history where there's Absolutely no distractions. So we are all solely focused on this one event, this one protest, this one fight for rights. And adding anything else into the mix, especially something we care so much about, like sports and specifically a sport we care so much about, I think you will create a little bit of a distraction and you'll create a reason for why people maybe should stay home and watch the game instead of, you know, going out to a march or like seeing what's going on in the march, et cetera. Um, it just creates another news flow. And, um, yeah, I think that if I was the NBA players, I would say the only way we're starting a season is if these demands are met, because I think you have a specific time in history where billionaires get to move in and get to change in once you fuck with their money. And there is a billionaire that owns every single NBA team. And that means you have, what is it? 32 or something like that. NBA team. There's 32 billionaires out there that will move politicians in whatever way they want to get that season started. So do not start the season without getting something out of it. 35 NBA teams. So mm-hmm. get something out of it. You got leverage. You got these billionaires begging you to play basketball. You better get something out of that more than just donating money. Um, That's not a bad take. Uh, Smart, very well thought out. Um, I didn't even look at it from that angle. Uh, I My take on the situation is, I don't think the NBA would be a distraction at all. In Mm. fact, I think that the NBA would help highlight what's going on out there in the streets even more. Mm. And we talk about history and we say, you know, this is a particular moment in history and we got a chance to make real change. The civil rights movement was a particular moment in history. And guess what they were doing during the civil rights movement? Playing motherfucking sports. Like we act like athlete activism hasn't been a thing forever. We act like protest through sports hasn't been a thing forever. Some right. of the greatest statements in social justice history have happened via sports, whether it was uh, uh, John Carlos and Tommy Smith during the Olympics when they stood up and put the black fist up, whether it was, you know, what Jim Brown was doing, using his leverage as a celebrity to 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 to, to push change, whether yep. it was Muhammad Ali, whether it was uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like we all remember that historic picture where it was, Jim Brown and Ali and Kareem and mm-hmm. all of them together. I forgot what they were doing in that picture, but it was something centered around social justice, if I'm not mistaken. Are, they Are you were talking about the, the, the diner pick? No, it wasn't a diner pick. I forgot. We just what about, you know, because there's the diner pick that Sam Cooke, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm nah, X. No, no, no. This is all athletes. Okay. It's all athletes. I think it's we Kareem. have that picture it's, in here somewhere. Actually. It's Kareem, Bill Russell, Jim Brown. They're all, I think they're all in support of Ali, if I'm not mistaken. Right. I don't remember. I don't remember. But um, and of course, the most recent, most recent protest through sports, Colin Kaepernick. Like, so it's like, why? And we think about even with the Eric Garner situation, not Eric Garner, the, uh, George Floyd situation. Mm-hmm. What was one of the main memes that was going around? LeBron James and the I Can't Breathe T-shirt that yeah. was based off Eric Garner. So yeah. I'm like, to think that we can't do both in a country is re- is wild to me. Like, like. It's wild. So I uh, I think that's a really good point. And I think that I think it's hard to find any hole in the point. The question uh, I guess I would have is, does doing both pull any attention away? And you could be right. Maybe it doesn't pull any attention away at all. Like 
we all have jobs and watch sports and watching sports doesn't really take away from the job. And I think we forget that the NBA is a job. <laughs> no, 100 percent. That's, that's those players jobs. Like 100 percent back to work. I guess I guess <laughs> I guess what I would say is this is like, all right, if you want to get back to work, you want to do it. Good. Do it. But you have the owners by the balls right now. Exactly. So you might as well get something out of it. If you're holding someone what, by the balls, though? get something out of it. To do what? You have to ask for a specific goal. I would ask for a specific thing that you want. It doesn't even have to be the, the thing that's going to cure everything. It could just be a specific thing that you want lobbied, right? And then make sure that that comes through. I mean, that's what I would do is you got, you got a little opportunity right here. You know you have it. When you go play, it's not like you're getting paid more money to play. Yeah, they're going to give $500 million or something like that to uh, social justice reform. But like people have been throwing money at the problem that is civil rights for years. Like every yeah, year, there's more millions of dollars thrown and nothing really seems to change. So maybe it's not money. Give it up, baby. I'll take it because at the end of the day, you know, you can't change what's in a person's heart. So the only way to really dismantle systemic racism is by acquiring power and by creating your own systems and your own institutions. And you need money to do that. So then that they 500 that. million maybe shouldn't go to these charities. Like maybe they should. They should. Well, that's the other thing that's tricky, like, and I got to look into it more, but like someone told me like the, and please correct me because I only just read a little bit about it, but like someone told me Minnesota Freedom Fund only spent $200,000 bailing people out of the $34 million that they raised. You see that? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad at that only because Can you if, look they that up have, if they have a fund, then that means that they have employees. You know what I mean? Now they're able to hire more employees. That means that they're able to do more events. That means that they're able to do more things in their community. Like the more money these these grassroots organizations have, the more they can do in our community. So I'm not mad at it. I just don't know what they want an NBA owner to do. Like the only only thing an NBA owner could do is what lobby for move politicians. You, who, yeah, whoever you feel is going to put those policies in place, that legislation in place that's going to change things. Force I mean, them to put place legislation, and yeah. then. It is true. It does say that, right? So force them to change the legislation and then force them to, uh, you have to have a specific goal. I mean, one of the tricky things about movements that don't have one specific leader is that the goals seem to be lost on the movement, like different parts of the movement want different things. And then once people see the, um, the movement gaining steam, other people that are part of the movement start going, all right, well, if y'all get in this, I want this. So like even this week, I think we saw like the Black Trans Lives Matter too pop up. And while yes, they do matter, and I think Black Trans Lives fits under Black Lives, right? But the fact that you're protesting police brutality and Black trans people, as far as I'm concerned, are not being murdered by police; they're just being murdered by civilians. So so that issue seems I, I, to I, I, distract I think, it, I think it was i think it was one that got killed by police. i don't i mean listen, i don't know i know right. it, it definitely was at least one that got killed by police officer. right and i'm not saying that that issue isn't valid and i'm saying that isn't in, in very important but it does seem to me that like if if clear goals and clear like um accomplishments aren't stated then it's very easy for like people to ask for a bunch of different things and when everybody's asking for their own thing nothing's gonna get done does that make sense yeah i get it so i, it. I so, mean i think I, I think everybody just wants everybody just wants the police to stop killing unarmed black and brown people that we can agree on but what i also yes. think everybody wants and i get it is they want their stories to have as much light as the next story like Bruh. it's very hard to, wa to walk into a store and you got a product and you see your product not getting no shelf space, baby. Hey, bro. Like that's that's just that's a thing. Like you want more, you want shelf space. So if George Floyd is killed, you want George Floyd. You want uh, Mr. Brooks from Atlanta. You want him to get as much credit. You want the the black trans lives that are getting murdered to get as much attention. Like you want it all to get equal attention. But so, but I don't think that's a, a people thing. That's more of a media thing. Yeah. The media got when they got shelf space. When it's one story that's ticking and moving, mm -hmm. that's what they go with. Mm. That's that's just the, that's just the, that's just the way it is. Mm. But that's what social media is for, right? Social media is so you can uplift and empower those other voices. Yeah. Like even with Breonna Taylor, I think we spoke about this last week. It's not that people don't care about Breonna Taylor's story. Yeah. Breonna Taylor's story didn't have a video with it. Bro, we were saying last week how like people should animate it, and this dude made this like great 
uh, like image by image version of what happened. Oh, yes. saw you that. saw that, yeah. and it made it super digestible and like yeah. very easy to understand. And like, I, I don't, I don't want that tune trauma. Say again. It was. Animated. I want that cartoon trauma. Say, oh, why not? No. It was just, it was just pictures, <laughs> no, though. Is what? It was just pictures. Oh, so they yeah, just drew it out. yeah, it's not Disney or anything. It's just like this <laughs> slideshow of what happened, but it makes it very digestible. So instead of just saying this person's name and then her story gets into like falls into the fold of all the black people who got killed by the police, you give a specific storyline to it and you're like, oh shit, this is this is crazy what happened here. There's no justice at all for this. There's no you can't dispute this at all. I get it. I get it. You know? I get it. I but uh, you know, to the to the NBA's point, um, I just I just don't see uh I don't see how them playing would distract anything. You're I really missing don't. the point though. Taylor's Charlotte. passionate about this. Because bro. like Taylor is a bam. All no. Taylor does is let Twitter think for her. She know it's no, it's, there's no thoughts about? of her own no, in your head. Tell me. Okay, tell At the end of the why. day, I just I told you before. Them putting on shirts saying don't breathe or kneeling and then going back to the game <laughs> no, is not I, solving it's the I issue. I can't breathe, not don't breathe. <laughs> I can't <laughs> you know what Taylor, I'm saying. Taylor, say. Taylor, what? Taylor. You being on this podcast right now isn't solving the issue. Me being on this podcast isn't solving the issue. Oh, Andrew being on this podcast isn't solving the Why are you comparing the, the basketball to what we're doing as, like, that's two different types of work. Why, why, why is it? We, we get, we get like, 300,000 listens a week. Are we distracting 300,000 people from but being But we're talking from, about what's going on, movement? though. The NBA, they're not talking about what's going yes, on. It's two can. different things. Oh, no, that's a lie. They can, they can easily protest through sports. They can wear the T-shirt. Yeah, they but then talk, they go they, back they, to they, playing, though. They, they, they can talk about it, and they, they can talk about it in their post game and I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you why this is such a half-ass argument these are the same people saying they want Colin Kaepernick to be back in the league I was watching I was watching first take today and it was like <laughs> Colin uh, is getting a workout with the Chargers so you mean to tell me that one of the biggest symbols of social justice Colin Kaepernick it's not a distraction for him to be playing again no, it is. I never, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing that, It's a that, great though. argument. You got to give it up, to. No, you're right. No, I'm not saying that. Oh, you don't, so you no. don't want Cap to get a job? I didn't say that either. I'm what are you saying? saying you gotta, what you Schultz, I'm saying one. what Schultz is saying, though. You have to demand some type of power. That's what I'm saying. You just wearing, them just wearing a shirt is not demanding really a power. You're just saying how y'all feel about it. That's yeah, what I'm why saying. Can't, why can't they do both, though? We act like LeBron. First of all, LeBron James has always done both. So why can't LeBron actually play and still in the afternoon or the nighttime or daytime or whatever time he, he got to, be, I, be using his organizations to push change? No, like, he can. He, he could do that, too. But I just think that he has the most power where he could, like, not play until he wants something really happen. Like, I just feel like he has more of a power like, than just giving. Maybe you know, maybe there's an argument here, Taylor, where it's like, uh, you know how, like, in the NFL, a player will, like, sit out his contract until his contract demands are met? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I mean. So like, that's what I'm saying. There has to be a goal. Or maybe something. there's a goal there. But I, I also understand Charlotte's point, which is they also have a platform and maybe they can use that platform to educate more people. Now, some people might go, hey, we're educated, bro. Like, this is all we've been focusing on for the last few months. We're not. It's not like anybody's going to learn that George Floyd was killed when they start watching a Lakers game. Yeah. Like, we're aware of it. I guess what I would say is, like, if you do play – there has to be some sort of benefit for the cause mm -hmm. and it can't be, well, we're making money and then our community is going to get that money because let's be, let's be honest, yo. Most NBA players, black NBA players, most do not live in black neighborhoods, right? Well, they, most, invest, they, they invest in sure, black neighborhoods. Sure, sure, they invest in it, but they're not... They're investing, but they're also buying homes in tons of white neighborhoods around the world. And they're doing it and they're allowed to do that because but, they want LeBron, to make money and they want to increase the amount of revenue they have and change their family's life. And that's totally respectable. But what often happens is the money gets removed from the neighborhood, just like Indians do it, just like Asians do it, just yeah, like anybody got, who gets wealthy. Yeah, but you got guys like LeBron James and Jalen Rose building schools. Right. A hundred percent. Shaquille O'Neal got a 26 story apartment complex in newark like yeah like uh i know i know some guys who just bought a a, a big ass like 100 plus unit building in the hood of chicago like, yeah uh, yeah yeah you know luau dang salute to my dude david gross and all those guys but it's just like that's the type of things that are that they do with their money so i get what you're saying they're not living in the neighborhood but they do invest in the community in a real 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 way and here's the other thing too all right nba players don't play so now are they going to be full-time activists because essentially, that's what I'm thinking. When I hear Kyrie Irving say, look, we're not going to play. Does that mean, Kyrie, you're going to be at every protest? 
Does that mean that you're no. going to be, I don't, you know, I'm not saying like, what, what, like, what are you going to do? You, you, I would like right. Dwight Howard. Are you going to be a full time activist now? Going? Like, oh, where are you going? Oh, your food's right. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that Kyrie, it's very hard to trust his intentions because throughout his career, his moves have always been very self-serving. You know, like I, I, it's hard for me to believe that if Kyrie had the chance to win a championship, he would say, no, we shouldn't come back and play. Yeah. And he knows he has no chance this year. So he's like, well, fuck it. We might as well sit out and help this cause is important. But like everything Kyrie's done in his career has been for Kyrie and nobody else. I was thinking about that. The Nets might actually have a chance though. But not because KD not coming back. Okay, he's not coming back. No, nah, he said he's not oh, playing okay, this okay, season. Okay, okay, okay. And Kyrie right. can, you know, barely play, you know, 20 straight games anyway. I think gotcha. LeBron is like, yo, I think we got this this year. Let's go for it. Like, what the fuck are we waiting for? I think they just want to get back to work like the rest of us. I want to get We've been studio. working. <laughs> I know, but I want to be I want to be in the Breakfast Club studio. I want to be with you doing the podcast. I'm not I want to get I want to get back to work. I'm not going to lie. I want to yeah. get back to doing what I love to do even though I still do it every day. So I yeah. can imagine them they're yeah. not doing it at all. Like, I just don't understand. I really don't understand the distraction logic as if athletes have never, you know, protested through sports before. Like, they've, they've used those platforms to get that messaging out. Like, that, that, that logic of it makes zero sense Yo, to me. It's a distraction. How? You know what it is, Charlotte? Someone needs to just go, and it's a really tough thing to do, but someone just needs to go, Yo, this is what we want. And you're going to piss people off when you do it. But someone just at a certain point in time needs to go, this is what we want. This is the goal. And I think they're, they're going to be. Now, what, tell me what it is. What is the exact I, I, goal? I, I think the goal is, is trying to get some police reform pushed and passed that actually holds police officers accountable. Not just accountable from a criminal standpoint, but, you know, that, that this, this disqualifying that qualified immunity thing holds them responsible from what you was talking about last week with the civil standpoint. So now right. you as a police officer are held personally responsible mm -hmm. financially for some shit. I think you need both, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think a person will, if they know they're not going to lose no money, they'll risk a trial in, mm. in, in, in this police loving society. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They'll risk that. But you got to have both. It's either pension or prison. Pick your poison. So you know maybe, what I'm saying? So Which maybe that's it. Maybe it's the qualified, it's called qualified immunity. Qualified immunity. But 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 the Democrats have that in their Justice and Policing Act. They wanted uh they wanted disqualified. They wanted disqualified they wanted disqualified qualified immunity. So then that's let's in, that's in the that's in the legislation they're trying to get passed. So then let's it. Boom. That's a perfect thing. That's the number one on the list. We want to get rid of dis what is it called? Qualified immunity, because that oh, oh. uh makes it possible for you know, police to be uh, prosecuted for their crimes. Because the reality of the matter is, motherfuckers are not going to stop making mistakes on a job. Uh, they, not even mistakes. They're not going to blatantly stop fucking people up. This past couple of weeks showed that. Son, you mean it's like think, getting caught? You ever cheated on your girl? And like, so you try to be no. good for that, like like a month? Uh, no. I know. I know. I know. You're right. Know. We don't. We black men don't cheat. Let's talk about. Andrew Schultz has never been a cheater. But I'm just saying. Because I always those, been black. <laughs> for, for those for those who have cheated you know when you get caught and you got that that period where you're just trying to be extra good yes that's when you don't cheat son so you got to be a real dirt dig ass motherfucker to still be doing shit during that probationary period it's unbelievable bro it's unbelievable that there are black people still getting killed this week you it's think crazy. this week the police would at least tell each other like yo just let them go like black yeah. people get to not get Tickets this week. Hey, just let them go this week. It don't matter. At, le at least try. Bruh. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Like, why? I'm looking at what happened to dude in Atlanta. Uh, Mr. Brooks. I can't remember his first name. Rayshard, Rayshard Brooks. Rayshard Brooks. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, just let him win the foot race. Son, bye. Like, God damn. Let, let him win the fucking. If you can't chase him down, let him win the foot race. He told you he lives right up the street. His mm -hmm. car is right there. Go there All tomorrow. All you got to do is run the license plate number. That's it. Get his address. You go pick him up later. You got to shoot him in the fucking back for what? Yeah, dog. It's really, it's weird, bro. You really think they'd be on best behavior? Nope. You think I this would be the it. week, bro? It's like, you know, you get a speeding ticket and then after that you drive 65 or you drive whatever the speed is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. fuck. Or especially if you get it like, no, they, they are just right back to speeding, bro. 
Uh, if you over, you, you fucking overdose. Yeah, you're like, I'm, I'm never doing heroin up. again. Like, I'm never doing heroin again. As soon as you get out, <laughs> bang. You know, you know what that tells you? You got a fucking addiction. Yeah. These motherfuckers is addicted to that power that comes with being a cop. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you disrespect that power, they will lay you the fuck out. That's yeah. really what it is. They do not like the fact that you had the audacity to challenge them. Whether it's running away, whether it's saying suck my dick, whether it's not complying when they ask you to do stuff, I really think it's just an abuse of power. Can you tell a cop to suck your dick? Yeah. Taylor, pull up the video from them guys in Harlem. <laughs> Taylor, pull up the video from that dude in Harlem. It was so disrespectful. It was so disrespectful. <laughs> Keep saying, I know where you're going. <laughs> Say suck, my, suck my dick is such a trigger for me. <laughs> That shit was so crazy. I'm like, yo, he was wilding. What'd he on say? This cop. He just told Taylor, him to suck his I'm, dick. I'm pull it up, Taylor. Al can pull it up and we can actually hear it. Oh, no, it doesn't have the. Oh, because I got the computer. I got the computer. It was the white people you're talking about, right? I No, they, they couldn't have been white. All I heard was the audio because Angelie was playing the audio on the radio. There was no way they was white. That was great. Cameron, Dipset era. Like, <laughs> now, Negro. What, is, what is the law? Like, can you tell a police officer to suck on your dick? I'm sure you can. <laughs> You can? That's illegal? I want to know what I'm allowed to say. Can you say, like, have a good day, suck my dick? I'm sure you can. I've seen too many people curse out police officers. Yeah, I think it not, it can not you say be. this? Can you be like, officer, do you know if I could park here, suck my dick? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, trying to see, I'm trying to see if I could throw it in to just regular police interactions right there. Oh, right, this street right. is closed. You know how I could get to Broom Street, suck my dick, bro, bro. It was ba- it was <laughs> bad. I, I you got it, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> son, <laughs> son, you cannot tell me at my age, thirty six, that I could have been telling police officers on, on, suck my As dick white, legally. You're a, white, you, you're a white man, and you've never cursed out a cop, bro. No, it's really? Like, oh. It's like cursing out your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would I curse them out, dude? Why would I curse them out for? <laughs> they just want to keep me safe oh, at any point in time. God. Oh my god! Hold on, um, dude, suck my else? dick. Now, so you can really say oh, anything to a cop as audio. long as you're not. You got it. It's just audio. As long as you're not threatening. <laughs> this. Let me see. Is this it? Let me hear. It. Yeah, this one? No, I don't think. Nah, no, 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 tell it, tell it, tell it. Which one is it? I don't know. The one where they say suck my dick. So here's the thing. <laughs> this is important. Hold on. Hold on. This Hold is on. important Google. distinction, Charla. So Harlem, okay, Alex right. just said you cannot threaten them. Okay? So you can't say suck my dick or else, but you can say you may suck my dick. <laughs> you can you can allow that you can allow it like if somebody wants like a bite of you know your pie is that it? got it they did it it was a protest and they were like suck my dick no 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 that's nah, not it nah. Nah. this might have been this this clearly had to be on world star go look on world star because remember angela you played it the other day on breakfast club i don't remember exactly what it was but the moral of the story is yeah yo cops don't give a flying fuck can you they, ask a cop, can you say to a cop like, yo, eat my eat my pussy? Huh? Exactly. I told a cop Because you don't up. got a pussy. So they technically can't do the thing that you're asking them to do. <laughs> Seriously, why is it so disrespectful to tell somebody to suck your dick? Suck your dick is so disrespectful mm-hmm. that people with no dick say it. Yo, you know how <laughs> nah, you know how, like suck this, my dick. Yo, so, no, no. <laughs> this is how this is how disrespectful suck my dick is, right? If your girl is about to suck your dick and you go, yo, suck my dick. She's like, man, get the fuck out of here. I ain't sucking your dick. <laughs> like, you fucking literally, she's right about don't to suck your me. dick. And you go, yo, don't suck me. my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck you talking to? Who the fuck you talking to telling me to suck your dick? Well, I've never, I've, I've uh, never understood right that. I've never understood why somebody giving you pleasure in something Excuse that me. is pleasurable would be disrespectful. Yeah, it's just an odd thing, especially if there's something they want to do. <laughs> They're about to do it. Give me, because it's going to get in the thing. That's Let it? me see. Crippin' over here. You know that. Oh, that's him. You know that. Crippin. 
Yo, yo, control your niggas, nigga. I'm like that. Yo, y'all police, my nigga. Yo, I'm really static, my nigga. Yo, I got bail money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chill, chill out. I got 50 bands right now. Bail money, my nigga. You said I forget it, but you doing it. Why are you doing it? That ain't even the one. But that's a good one. <laughs> sure. Son, that was a lot of suck my dicks, bro. That's a good one. That, Yo, that's not even the one I, I was talking about. The one I was talking about. The one I was talking about. They were searching his car in Harlem. It was searching a car in Harlem. Oh no, nah, that one's a little different. But I will say this: suck my dick has diminishing power. Talk to me. Like the first suck my dick really stings. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, a, my dick is kind of basic, though. Yeah, it's basic, but think it's about basic. it. The first time someone says it to you, you're like, yo, what the fuck? Around like the fourth or fifth or sixth time. You're like, pull your fucking pants down. <laughs> Let me show you what the fuck my mouth do. I'm sick of this shit. Yeah. Now what? Let me you're see really what, not you, about this life, huh? You're not about this shit. Let me see. Right. Son, son, what if... Bro, what if he says suck my dick and the cop just took a knee, bro? That's what I'm Yo, saying. Son. That's what I'm saying. One day, I'm telling you, one day one of you suck a dick, motherfuckers, is gonna get what you're asking for. I'm serious. One day you suck a dick, people, is gonna yeah. get what you asking for. Real you talk. talk. You talking about NBA players demanding what they want. Y'all have a very specific ass. <laughs> And y'all keep saying that shit to people and watch what the fuck happens, man. You I'm might get your dick you. sucked. You might get you might your get dick sucked by someone you don't want to suck by. <laughs> a cop is definitely. You really okay. want a cop to suck your dick? <laughs> Come on, dog. He just rolls that shit into a donut. <laughs> well, <laughs> bro, that'll be the worst thing for you. A cop suck your dick and then look you in the eyes and say... Black lives do it. Yo, son. Yo, son. Yo, son. Yo, son. Wow, bro. You wow, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The visual like, the of you cleaning off your face. The cleaning off your face visual. You didn't have to suck his sloppy, bro. You didn't, have to, you didn't have to use all the saliva everywhere. Hey, but by the way, if a cop ever did do that. <laughs> yeah. You would disrespect the shit out that cop. Get away. What do you mean? You would be fucking <laughs> random. You, you, you'd be nutting in his face. There's a lot like of porn would, like that, you'd though. Be, you'd be slapping your dick around his fucking <laughs> mouth. Yo, son. Like, Yo, son. Charla. This guy. I got this cop sucking Charla. my dick, son. Charla. Look, <laughs> Hold on. Hold then on. Later on. Then later on, you'll see the cop be like, that's that punk ass cop who sucked my dick. <laughs> son, son, son. Why the cop got to be a dude? <laughs> it could have been a girl cop. Oh no, that's not. That's not. That's nothing. Nobody <laughs> cares about that. That's nothing. That's nothing. Who the fuck cares about that? Come on now. Yo. Oh fuck. That wouldn't. No. That, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be an entertaining storyline. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like what? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Now listen, you know who else? I'm gonna tell you who's what a fucking idiot. Uh, yeah, Tanaya Tan Saleh, and um, what's the other young lady's name? Tanaya Saleh, and oh, what's her name? What are you talking it's about? the Middle East and uh, Eastern Europe influencer. Oh, what she said? They, oh, Tanaya Saleh and Suhila Lakab. They both in support of Black Lives Matter, decided to put on blackface. <laughs> so they put the blackface on. Mm. One of them put an Afro on. Mm. The other one, the other one put brown on one. They put brown paint on one side. Mm. And she put, we're all black on the inside. <laughs> she said, we're all black on the inside? We're all black on the inside. No, what did she say? Oh, let me read this stupid shit. I wish I was black. Oh, one of them, the one that put the Afro on, Said, I wish I was black because my idols in music and dance are black. All the athletes I respect are black, right? Uh, the other young lady said, just because we're black on the outside doesn't mean we're black on the inside. Racist people are the true black hearted ones. They are black on the inside and they know it. Too woke, bro. Too woke. Too fucking woke. Somet sometimes when you're too woke, you know, you don't think straight because sleep deprivation is a real fucking thing man facts Some, bro you got to get them naps bro nap time like, get them naps all nap you woke time. people get them naps man take a nap you know what Whatever it is you i think you could tell how many black friends people have by the way they <laughs> protest <laughs> and the crazier the protest the fewer black friends they know like there's no way that those two girls have a single black friend in their entire phone 
because yeah, 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 yeah. no black friend would be like, nah, that's a good thing to do. Name yeah. one black person that would see them with their half of their face painted black no. and go, nah, you really no. showing support. That's what we needed. No. Yeah, we would, we would absolutely be like, yo, knock it the fuck off. And yeah. why wouldn't you run that by some of your black friends? Because they don't have any black friends. They don't have no black friends. They have no... I'm telling you, bro, you could really... People who don't have any black friends, they don't want to be... They, they might come from a good place. They don't want to seem racist, but they truly don't know how to show black people they're not race, racist, so they go over the top with it. They're trying to be like too woke and they, they end up doing this black. goofy ass shit. Woke. They might know yeah. black people, but they're not friends with them. That's the problem. Yeah, they know, they know some black people, but not well enough to like ask them if they should paint their face black or not or like wear an afro. Uh, another, another positively brilliant... Uh, First, I mean, first of all, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been positively brilliant for over 60 plus years. But there was a social experiment that happened this week that I found so interesting. Which was? Chelsea Handler posted an old video of um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan when he was on Donahue. Right. And uh, it's him breaking down, you know, white privilege to an audience, you know, and it's when Farrakhan was saying, I, don't, I really don't think you fully understand what has happened to these people you look at as second class, our inferior citizens in this nation. And he was breaking down how black people were brought to this country and stripped of their name and their language and mm -hmm. their culture and their religion and their God and all of that. Right. And Chelsea posted it with the caption. I learned a lot from watching this powerful video. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamila Jamil reposted it with the caption. Y'all know Jamila Jamil, right? Yes. She's okay. like the body she post, shaming thing. Yeah, Jamila posted a, the same video and put, someone please tell me the name of this extraordinary man who so perfectly sums up white fear in under a minute, right? Right. So then, like, Jennifer Aniston liked it and Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, <laughs> Sean Hayes, right? All of these white people. Today, the Daily Beast runs an article. Hollywood celebs are praising an anti-Semitic hate monger. Right. And they said, do your homework. So all of these people, except for Chelsea Handler, so far have pulled down their honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan post. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, you know, the media wants to paint Minister Farrakhan as anti-Semitic and you know, homophobic and misogynistic, all of these different things. Right. Right. What I found interesting is that the truth can never be denied. Okay. When somebody says something honest and truthful, right, and you don't have no context to it, like you don't have no context about the person saying it, nothing. You're just listening to the words that are coming out of their mouth. It resonates with you, right, and it resonates with you so much that you want to share it, right. So, what does it say when you find out that the media may feel a certain way about this person, so they start changing the narrative of this person to you? Does it change the truth that they spoke? Should they have taken those videos down, regardless of how they felt about who the messenger was? Mm. Or should the truth have been spoken regardless? Mm. Because they always say God uses the people that you would least suspect, right, to deliver certain messages. So if that message touched you, should it impact you any less because of who it came from? I think, um, I think the message shouldn't but we do understand that messengers are important and i think that chelsea handler's jewish right yes i think that chelsea handler since she's jewish can be way more comfortable reposting the honorable minister farrakhan because if he said some things that people deem anti-semitic she could be like well look i'm jewish and i'm posting this what are you going to say i'm anti-semitic whereas Jennifer Aniston and these other people who might not be Jewish have to live in fear that they could be labeled as an anti-Semite because they're supporting this guy who has said things that are anti-Semitic or and people I, people interpret as anti-Semitism. And you're right. And right. I get it. But my thing is this. Does it matter if what he said in that moment that you agree with is true? So now you're going down to really... Now you're going down a really tough situation where it's like people could go, this is what people say to you. They go, well, Charlemagne, if the, you know, this racist guy from the KKK said some things, uh, you know, that were similar to like, you know, what Jesus said in the Bible, is that cool that that message is true? I, I think y'all have listened to me long enough to know that I can, I understand nuance. Right, right. 
And 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 I I'm a, I'm a stern believer. You can learn something from anything, right? But are, but are you are you willing to listen? Is the thing, right? Because think about it. If I'm walking down the road, right, right, and the KKK member says, "Hey, don't go down there. They're gonna shoot you." Am I gonna ignore him because he's a KKK member? It's a good point. If if, if you're walking down the road and Honorable Lewis, Minister Lewis Farrakhan says, "Look, for the next half mile, it's nothing but landmines," are you gonna not listen to him? All right, here's the thing. Reposting it and liking it seems like a cosign of the person. So, you know, we, we had this discussion on flagrant, but we can we very it's very difficult for us to separate the art from the artists, but we can mm-hmm. separate the science from the scientists. You know what I mean? Probably because we don't know no scientists except for Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye. <laughs> DeGrasse. <laughs> DeGrasse. <laughs> DeGrasse, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like, if a fucking scientist told you some shit that's true mm-hmm. and they were a really fucked up person, they did some foul stuff, you know? You Neil, still- Ty- Neil, De- Neil deGrasse Tyson. You're not going to listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson because he got me too? Does this depend how much you hate the oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson anyway, bro. That's not his name? What the fuck so is his name? It is Neil deGrasse, but deGrasse's funny because that's where Drake got shot. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, Neil yeah. deGrasse. Ah, deGrasse sounds so funny. You're confusing dorky black guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you're not going to listen to him because... He got me too. Exactly right. So you're not gonna, you're not going to listen to what he has to say about science because he got me too. Exactly. So it's like maybe this thing that the minister said within itself that message resonates with you regardless of who said it. It could be the Clearly, minister. It could yeah. be your mom. It could be uh, some chick named Natalie. It could be anybody. Right. Yes. Yes. So that's what you're saying. What you're saying is it don't matter who said it as long as it resonates with you. And I guess what I'm saying is. People think that if you like a page, then you and you know uh, Jamila Hill is a perfect example. If you like any Jamel meme, Hill, Jamila Hill, Jamila Hill has just got taken off all the cert bottles. Aunt Jamila, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> Aunt Jamila is no nah, longer. No, but like Jamila Hill is like yeah. if you like any meme page that has ever had something slightly uh, racist on that meme page, she will find that out and she will like expose you if, even if you're like a fifth round draft pick, right? So. There's a version of Jamel Hill that does the exact same thing for people who like and you know uh, uh, pages that might have anti-Semitic rhetoric or homophobic rhetoric or cetera on it. So that same gotcha journalism exists on both sides. When the reality is maybe that meme page had a funny meme that wasn't racist, and maybe yeah. this message by Mr. Farrakhan was absolutely beautiful, despite the other things he said that might be questionable by some people. Yeah, I think that I got to put people under the what a fucking idiot if you don't understand nuance. Because to me, this was this, this was such a great social experiment because right. it showed if you don't have no context to a person, right? Somebody is polarizing as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He's polarizing to a lot of people. Yeah. You don't have, if you don't have any context about this person, Jamila Jamil didn't even know who he was, but she heard those words coming out of his mouth. That truth resonated with yeah. her so much. She had to repost it. Chelsea Handler heard that truth. She had to repost it. All these other celebrities heard that truth. They had to repost it. But once they are told by the media what to think about a person. Then forget it. Fuck, that's whack to me. You know what that's it is? Whack. It's, it's like when uh, when like uh, Trump and Kim Kardashian were working on like getting uh, the, the that black person out of jail, right? It was like wrongfully accused or something. Alicia, Alicia Johnson, I think her name. Right. So it's like. There were a lot of people that couldn't look at that specific act and go, this is a good thing because it was attached to this person they despise so much. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, it's, that's stupid. And I know. And what you're saying is praise the act because the act isn't the yes. person. Praise the message because yes. that message isn't the person. Yes. It don't and mean yep. that you co sign the guy that did it. And even if it is the message coming from said person, that don't mean you should dismiss it. I think that we should all be a little bit a little bit more intelligent enough to know that I'm not going to agree with everything a person says, but truth is truth regardless of who says it. Yo, right is right regardless of who's doing it. Malcolm X had a quote, I'm gonna find it. Go ahead, say your thought. You had a thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um there's a saying, it's uh you ready? People don't have ideas. Ideas have people. 
So we think that we're we the ones that, that did have people. we think we're the ones that are coming up with all these ideas. But the reality is, is these ideas actually have us. These ideas always exist. Ideas are out in the ether. An idea can be said by Mr. Farrakhan, but that same idea can be shared by Malcolm X. It can be shared by Teddy Roosevelt. It can be shared by anybody. That idea yeah. exists out there in the ether. And maybe there's something that's special about Minister Farrakhan, which allowed him to attach himself to it. Yeah. Right. But the idea exists separately from him. He doesn't own the idea. So liking yes. the idea is not a reflection on liking the person delivering it. But Absolutely. the way we see social media, we always assume it is. I'm going to post this tomorrow. I've, I've posted this before, but Malcolm X says I'm for truth no matter who tells it. Bang. I'm for justice no matter who it is for or against. Yeah. I'm a human being first and foremost. And as such, I'm for whoever and whatever benefits humanity as a whole. Mm -hmm. Simple is fucking that. Yeah. Like that, even though, even though I got to put this under the what a fucking idiot, that's what Ben Carson was getting at when he said he wants everybody to stop being sensitive and grow up in response to Trump's speech in Tulsa. Hmm. He said the U.S. needs to stop being offended about every fucking thing. Okay. <laughs> and that's a fact. He said we've reached a point in our society where we dissect everything and try to ascribe some nefarious notion to it. Right. That is very fucking true. When is the last time you saw something and actually just thought that the person meant well? When the last time we've seen something on Twitter go viral because people aren't picking it apart? Yeah, you just trusted the messaging. Yes. When? When the last time? Like, I'm watching them go crazy on J. Cole, who has been a hip-hop media darling for so long. <laughs> and I'm like, am I missing something here? Yeah, I, I, I could feel it in the air. There's a little... People just want to react. People want to cancel right now. Can you feel it? Like, people are anxious. People are angry. They're like, nah, we need to, we need to flex the muscle a little bit right now. Can we cancel white supremacy? Can we cancel? Yo, that's racism? fire. Can we cancel police brutality? Can we, we you talk about being distracted. Y'all talking about the NBA being a distraction. Fucking J. Cole, J. Cole put out a song last night and everybody's distracted. I didn't, Yo, to be honest with you, I didn't even know what was going fire. on. I'm catching all backstory here. You know, um, I, I, I saw the tweet from the young lady named No Name. No uh, Name, my, yeah. My, my niece Nyla put me on because Nyla was putting me on to No Name's music a while ago. Mm -hmm. She was saying how I would really like No Name because she's dope and she speaks for something. And No Name posted a tweet and she said, poor black folks all over the country are putting their bodies on the line in protest for our collective safety. And y'all favorite top selling rappers not even willing to put a tweet up. Uh, niggas whole discographies be about black plight and they're nowhere to be found. J. Cole put out a song yesterday called Snow on the Bluff, where he's basically, I guess, replying to her tweet. And J. Cole basically said, he even tweeted out this morning, I haven't done a lot of reading. And I don't feel well equipped as a leader in these times, but I do a lot of thinking and I appreciate her as in no name and others like her because they challenge my beliefs. And I feel that in these times, that's important. Mm. And I was listening to J. Cole's song and listening to what he said about no name. And I understand what all the black women are saying, saying that, you know, at a time where black women are being attacked and, you know, getting found dead and things of that nature. Yeah. It just sounds kind of crazy for a man to be, being passive aggressive towards a woman in a sense. And I, and I get that. I, I, I totally understand that. Right. You got to read the room sometime, but I also agree with J Cole in the sense that why, why did people make J Cole out to be a revolutionary? I think, who, I think he, who, who died and made J Cole Tupac, Tupac. Uh, I, I think J Cole leaned into it. You I know what I mean? Like, Oh, you don't I've think so? You that. don't think the music yes. has been woke? You don't think the do music has had messaging? Cole, not just his mainstream. I'm talking about like, do you listen to his like? Yes, and I, and I, and, I, and but but not only do I listen to J Cole's music, I listen to J Cole's interviews, and I've, I'm on record. I've said it before. When I listen to J Cole's interviews, I've, I've I've always heard a brother who's still trying to figure it out. He's not even able to articulate what he feels. Sometimes he just knows he feels it. That's why I think the pen is so good for a brother like that. Because when he sits down and he can write those rhymes, he can tell you what he thinks. He can tell you what he believes, right? But he may not have the answers or the solutions to the problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. He can just tell you what he's feeling and what he's experiencing. But they exalted J. Cole as this 
leader of a revolution. Like when the protest broke out, they're like, where J. Cole at? Where Kendrick at? Like, I don't expect them to be there. You know what I expect these guys to be? Make music. In the studio, mm. making the soundtrack to the protest. I'm waiting for Kendrick's now. I'm, I'm waiting for Kendrick too. I'd it's love to hear some Kendrick music. Too. But guess what? If you don't put out no music, I'm not tripping. I'm not forcing Andrew to do a set during quarantine. You know what I'm saying? Andrew, where your new material at? What if Andrew fucking depressed? What if Andrew got anxiety? What if Andrew going through some shit? What if Andrew don't feel like being creative in this moment? They don't see that, though. That is, they don't see celebrities that as that, though. That is true, but, like, I'll be honest. Like, we we did a couple pieces on what's going on, you know, and we thought it was important to do it. And we, we used the platform that we have. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did everything that I thought that I could do within my power and using the skill that I have and the platform and the access I have to kind of explain these things. And we did it, you know, Alex, uh, my guy, Mark, like that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to contribute to this movement in whatever way we can. I think that being said, I've never been an activist. Y'all know that that's not my thing. Uh, I never claimed to be an activist and maybe some people thought of J. Cole as an activist and then not seeing him or, or again, I don't know enough about his music to make a right, you know, an accurate statement, but maybe they thought not seeing him as present or something like that was like, yo, you were, you are always here and loud before, but we haven't seen you doing this now. Maybe they were questioning that. I mean, he, he, was again, I don't know enough to say, I'm, but I'm, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. But he was at a couple of protests. And I think right. sometimes, man, we mistake support for activism. Right. You know, if I show up to a protest, it doesn't mean that I'm an activist. It means that I'm showing support. Right. If I'm, stand, if I'm standing in a fucking car, I'm not a, if, I, if I'm standing in a garage, I'm not a car. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you see me randomly standing in your garage, you should call somebody. But I'm just simply saying, like, just because I show up to a, a protest doesn't mean I'm an activist. I'm just Yo, here to support. You and know that's what, what it I is? think guys like J. Cole yeah. do. You know what it is? I think it's like, when you create, and I hate to talk about comedy and stuff like that, like art, because I think it's kind of like bougie, but like when you create content, let's say, in the way that you do or I do, we reflect on the culture, right? We, when I mean the culture, I don't just mean like black culture. I mean like whatever's happening within culture at the time. Absolutely. If it's absolutely. Trump, if it's Biden, if it's protest, whatever it is. So for me to put out a video or a piece that didn't reflect what was going on with George Floyd would be phony for me because I always reflect on what's going on. So I feel like, of course, J. Cole, if he puts out music, he's going to reflect what's going on, right? Because that's just mm -hmm. kind of what he does naturally, no? Like, yeah, I feel yeah, like absolutely. if you're putting out party songs right now, you're missing the point a little bit. Oh, little Baby dropped fire. What's the name of that Little Baby record? Little Baby song so goddamn hard and he rapping about what's going on right now. What's the name of that record, Taylor? Hold on. Oh, that's right. He just dropped an album, right? Man, that shit's so hard. Little ba no, it wasn't an album. It's just a song. Oh. Uh, Lil, Lil Baby dropped a hard-ass record. Meek Mill dropped an, a hard-ass record with Other Side of America. But guess what? That's what, tho that's what those brothers... The Bigger Picture? That's what, the Bigger, picture? The the bigger, bigger picture. picture? Bigger Picture. That shit is hard. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's just like, yo, if he was moved to make that, fine. If, Andrew, you're moved to make those type of sketches or uh, that commentary... Fine, but you can't force people to do it. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like you can't force people to be at protests. And I saw people saying, oh, J. Cole, you know, he, he's not a real leader and this and that. And I'm like, why is he not a real leader? Is he not a real leader because he admitted he don't read all the time? Like I saw that tweet. That tweet was wild, which I thought was hilarious where he was like, you know, he don't really. I, just, I read it a little while ago, but it's just like because he doesn't read doesn't make him a great leader. Like, I don't think. That matters. I think great Yo. leaders don't set out to be a leader. I think they set out to make a difference. Like you, it's never about the yeah. role. It's about the goal. You know Big how Cole has yeah. always set out to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I see. It. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Like, you, you know how like um, if your boss treats you like shit at work or whatever, the authority figures treat you like shit at work. You know how sometimes the husband comes home or the wife comes home and then treats the family like shit. Absolutely. And she wants to treat the boss like shit, but she can't because they're an authority figure. So she ends up treating the people like shit that she can, right? Which are the people closest to them. Yeah, I yeah, wonder yeah. if that's kind of what's happening right now, which is like people are just really furious that the authority figures, you know, the police are treating oh, the yes. black people like shit. Yeah, 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 and 100%. since you can't act out on the police officers outside of telling them to suck your dick. You're like, all right, well, we got to take out this anguish on the people closest to us. And J. Cole might be one of those people. J. Cole, you know what I mean? J. Cole, like, 
J. Cole said something this morning in one of those tweets. He said, uh, we all got to be easy with each other. We all got to be kind to each other or something, be nice to each other. And he, yo, he's absolutely right. My brothers, my sisters, everybody's hurting. Yeah. Everybody is in pain. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's tender right now. Like everybody is literally out here trying to do their best. Yeah. I don't think J. Cole had any ill intention when it came to, you know, replying to no name. No name is a rapper, right? Yeah. So J. Cole did what he did. J. Cole rapped. He didn't tweet. J. Cole don't be tweeting crazy like that. No name. Salute to her. She posted a tweet and she expressed herself. And guess what? She didn't name no names, but a hit dog will holler. So yeah. J. Cole and J. Cole said himself. Yeah. He felt like he wasn't doing enough. Right. So no name was absolutely right. No name hit one of J. Cole's pain bodies in that moment because J. Cole probably is sitting around hurt, vulnerable, trying to figure out a solution to things and feel like he wasn't doing enough. So he went in the studio and he expressed himself. Yeah. I think that J. Cole was just using that as an entry point to let everybody know I'm not the leader of this movement. Right. I am not the, the activist leader that y'all think I am. I'm just simply trying to figure it out. And I think that's where we get things fucked up. Is J. Cole a leader of the new school when it comes to rap? Hell yeah. Right. For the past decade, J. School has been a, J. Cole's been a part of that three-headed monster with Drake and Kendrick. Yeah. But does that mean he's Tamika Mallory? No. Right. Does right. that mean he's my son? No. Right. Does that mean he's Linda Sarsour? No. Does that mean he's Philip Agnew? No. He's not one of those activists that's out there on the front lines. He just shows up to protest and support. Y'all made him that. And now when a person yeah. doesn't meet your expectation of them, mm -hmm. you're disappointed. That's the problem yeah. with us right now as a people. We have an expectation of people that and we then, create yeah. in our own mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And then they don't meet our expectation that we gave them. And then we get disappointed when they're like, yo, I didn't ask for none of this, man. I just wanted to make really cool music that had a message in it. Like, that's it. I think, yeah, I think, I think you hit he the nail it. on the head there. He, he said, I don't read a lot, but I think a lot. He's, yep. a, he's a thought leader. Yeah. You listen to J. Cole's music, you know, he's a thought leader. Yeah. He, he, he's able to provide soundtracks for things that are going on. Yo, I think, but, you, but I think you're right about that, man. And I, but I really also think it has to do with like just being hurt and having no outlet for the anger and then touching the people that are closest to you, right? Like, cause that's what we do. Like when we're in a bad mood, I find myself doing this in a bad mood. Like, and it's, it sucks. But if I'm in a bad mood and then like a friend of mine does something or like puts a can somewhere where it shouldn't be or whatever, I'm like, yo, you're just going to leave that there? I don't give a fuck if they leave a can on the table, but I'm lashing out because I got some shit going on in my yeah. life. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I could and, totally, and, yeah. And I look at all the sisters online and the sisters are saying things like, you know, um, J. Cole got the nerve to tell black women to be patient. Listen, I totally get it. I totally understand why black women, you know, don't have patience with us anymore. I totally understand. <laughs> but I just think we all need to be patient with each other because whether we realize it or not, we're all in this together. Black men are getting killed. Black women are getting killed. Like trans people are getting killed. Like we're all in this together. Like we don't yeah, have, but we're, not, not, we're, every, we're not each other's enemies. Bro, it's it's going to be tough for the person who says it and they're going to have to find a way more eloquent way to say it than the way I'm going to say it. But like in a situation like this, you can't have an all lives matter approach. You have to have a specific goal and some people are going to have to sacrifice. Like I've been talking to friends, I can't say where they work, but they work in, you know, certain industries. And they're like, how do we affect change within our industry, right? People who are part of like big corporations. And they literally said at these tables, they've gone, you know what? We're going to make this the prime focus. We're going to make black equality the prime focus. And you know what that means? That means the cancer kids got to take second fiddle. That means women's rights got to take second fiddle. That means that uh, special needs got to take second fiddle. That means we're going to ignore those other issues because this specific issue, and if we're going to do anything to change it, requires all our focus. And that's the whole idea between Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter. But you can't All Lives Matter your own movement. You see what I'm saying? No, nah, I get you. I just think it's very weird that we can't walk and chew gum at the same fucking time. No, nah, you can't. No, no. In this situation, you can't. 
If you want to chew the fuck out of that gum and get every bit of flavor out of it and make sure you feel every bit of flavor that that gum has, you need to sit there and focus on the flavor. You can walk and chew gum and talk on the phone and do all those things, but while you're talking on the phone, you're going to forget what flavor the gum is. And while you walk in, you're going to forget about the phone call. I just just think that it takes uh, allied, concerted effort between black people, white people, black bro. men, black women, men, bro. women, get LGBT, what it, what black it, people. Like, what is civil rights about, man? Civil rights, at the end of the day, we talk about how it's about equality, right? Mm-hmm. But in its essence, civil rights is about sacrifice. Civil rights is people who have privilege per se. I don't even like to call it privilege because it's not a privilege that I don't get killed by the cops. That's the bare minimum that I don't get killed by the cops. That's what everybody should have bare minimum, right? That shouldn't be some benefit I get. So, but the idea of civil rights is people who are getting more have to sacrifice some of what they have for other people to come up. And that doesn't just mean white people. That also means maybe people within the the black movement, maybe it's like, you know what? We want black trans lives. We want our, 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 we want our support and everything right now too. But maybe it's the black trans movement starts to go. You know what? What's more important right now is Black Lives Matter, and we're gonna get to our shit after. And Black Lives Matter, you better support us when the focus is just on us, because we're gonna take this. We're gonna take this sacrifice right now to push this to the top. Yeah. Yo, this is an interesting conversation. I want to keep going on this. Uh, let's us uh, pay a bill real quick. Um, Yo, man, shout out to uh, Squarespace. Simple as that. If you need a website, you need to get that domain. You need to legitimize your business. I don't care. Everything's on the internet. If, if, if there's anything that Corona showed us, it's that the companies and businesses that have been able to flourish through the internet, ourselves included, are succeeding within this pandemic. And it's because we have that space available. When you can't leave the house, you can leave... Uh, the house, I guess, on the internet when you're surfing, when you're web searching, etc. So make sure you have a place right there. The way you do that is that you go to uh, squarespace.com and you get yourself a domain, okay? They have all these custom templates. It's so easy, I can do it, okay? I'm inept when it comes to this website building and that kind of stuff. I just don't know how to do it. Squarespace is the easiest thing that you've ever experienced. Yo, 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 Yeah, yeah, we're just talking about Squarespace right now. So make sure you go get your website, squarespace.com, okay? Uh, Make sure you use the promo code IDIOTS, okay? The promo code IDIOTS, and you can get, what percent off can we give them? Oh, idiot. What percent off can we give them, Taylor? 10% off. We can give you 10% off, okay? You can go try it for free, by the way. You can go set up your website website you can go set up everything and when you want to launch it use that promo code idiot okay and then you can get that 10 percent off your website or domain go do that right now shouts to squarespace i'm telling you if you have a business it has to have a website that is it okay you need to have a cpr kit in the fucking restaurant and you need to have a website or else the shit ain't legit let's get back to the show we're having an interesting conversation uh, uh, yeah yeah, i want to um yeah i I just want to say i want to what you said is absolutely true but that goes back to what I said when I said it has to be an allied, concerted effort. Because, yes, black people cannot change or dismantle a system that we didn't create. So it does take those people that have privilege, those white people that are in positions of power, yep. to give up some of that privilege and power. Like, they, they just have to. Like, in order to, in order to make this world equal, we all have to do that. White people got to give up some of that privilege and power for for black people and that others. That is the uh, idea men, of men, civil rights. Men got to yeah. men got to give up some of our our privilege and power to make to, to share with other women. Yep. To share with women, and that's why I don't even like. I hate that that term. Um, make space. I don't. I don't because this is this is all gods, right? Mm-hmm. So we're not making space for anybody. You know what I mean? If anything, we're just finally being. Let's be more welcoming. Let's all be intentional about it, being welcoming. It's make opportunity, not space. You know Ooh, what I mean? It just give go, opportunity. So it's like give everybody. There the, you go. The idea. You go. Isn't that the idea? The idea of civil rights. It's not making space is, hey, you guys can have your own water fountain over there. I made some space for your own water fountain. Making opportunity is like, nah, we all going to share the water fountain. You know, and if that means you got to wait a little longer at your water fountain, that's what it means. 
Oh, by the way, I don't mind having my own water fountain. I get what I get it. Bro, I get the, yo, I the analogy what, was the analogy's on point, but yo, I, I I don't mind having my own. You know what's mad funny? Do you think like black people saw the way that white people kiss our dogs in the mouth and they were like, yo, should we get our water fountains back? Yo, why the fuck are we sharing water fountains? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck the fuck were we thinking, bro? <laughs> Some of the segregation ain't all bad. So I just real, sent yo. you something, Charlemagne, about Omar Johnson. He was kind of trying to say that for God. <laughs> but he, I, this is the first time I kind of, in a way, I see what he's talking about. But mm-hmm. he's saying like, you know, when it comes to protesting and stuff like that, we can't have a successful protest. Like black people can't have a successful protest mm-hmm. because um, if, if white people get involved, because it now shows like a mix or something, and take. He said something like where it takes away from what our purpose in because like what you guys said earlier it becomes into like a all i i, I, I don't I agree with that i haven't listened to what he said but i highly disagree and uh the reason i disagree because if the protest is for black lives matter mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who's protesting you know what i'm saying if black, if black people are out there on the front lines and white people are on the front lines and asian people but we're protesting for this specific thing it doesn't matter like is it uh, listen but, so you're telling me that people with cancer can't protest uh, for, for people with AIDS? Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> like, what are you yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you what are you to, saying? You, just re- you have to hear so, the audio. Because by, by that whole, Taylor, by that logic, by that logic, men can't stand up for women then. Mm. By yeah. your logic, men can't. By that logic, that men logic. can't stand up for women. <laughs> it's an interesting it was point. How he said it, though. Of course, of course. I can see it's, what it's an interesting point. Though. It just has a lot of holes in it, and it's not exactly how you structurally fit this. Because if the goal is integration mm-hmm. and the goal is reform, you need the side that no, is do. rejecting th- to be part of it. If the goal is revolution and take over and destroy, then you don't give a fuck what the side is. Yeah. But the reality of the matter is, as a minority in a country, you have to get the support of the majority in order to have equal opportunity. Yeah. So I think you want it. And, and if you notice the big changes that have happened, that's when there has been unilateral support for the movement. Right. I, I, I think I think you want people to to recognize. And I think if there's one thing that we learn from these protests is there are a lot of white people, a lot of Asian people, a lot of brown people who are like, mm-hmm. yo, black lives matter to us, bro. Yes, because they, 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 they don't only just love black culture. They love black people. Yeah. And if you don't think it matters, be the lone white boy in the hood. <laughs> be, the, be the lone white boy in the hood who loves hip hop and loves hip hop culture and wants to dress and talk and listen to the music and you love black women let's see how that goes for you if you don't got no black support <laughs> All right? let's, let's see if they give a fuck about you without any black support let's see how that goes yeah, for you that's a great you point need, it goes both need, ways it goes both ways you need the support of other individuals sometimes in certain circumstances. I think this is one of those crucial turning points in Yo, America. Yo, that's a where fucking, we need each other. that's a brilliant way of putting it, man. Because like, I remember when I was younger, I'd go hang out with a buddy of mine and he lived out in, uh, he lived out in Brooklyn by Eastern Parkway. And I'd be walking Black through. Jamaicans yeah. everywhere. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Boom, Super boom, Jamaican, boom. super Jamaican. Thunder what you clap. doing around here, white boy? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, and um, I remember and I remember I'd be like walking in a neighborhood and then, you know, some people would maybe like ask some questions or whatever. And there'd be someone else who's like, nah, 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 that's Sadiqi's boy. Everything's cool. Yep, right. Exactly. That's I got to know who you are. You, you might be an undercover cop. Yo, OK. You might be a you, or you might, might be a, a mark. You might be you might a have, mark. Right. It's like yes. you, you might have your white van around the corner <laughs> trying to kidnap kids. Oh, the fuck. This, what are you doing? A hundred percent. But once somebody from the neighborhood was like, nah, nah, he's cool. Right. That's it. That's literally all civil rights is. <laughs> right it's just like nah nah they're cool like yo why are you giving them a hard time like yo 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 what's going on leave it alone everything's cool by the way you, and you, you, yeah. you, that sounds like a joke but it's not because think about it if you are old white politician what what reason would Lyndon B. Johnson have to, to, to do this or John F. Kennedy to, 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 to start the talks of the civil rights acts and the, the voting rights acts yeah. other than other than look these people are cool and they're going to tear our fucking country up if we don't fucking yeah. do the right thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, you have uh, eventually empathy has to kick in where you got to say to yourself, okay, what we're doing is wrong. Yes. This is wrong. Like I, and I, I refuse to believe that at some point human empathy doesn't kick in mm. and somebody in those positions of power says, 
we have to do right mm. by these people. Or we have to do right by black people. We got to do right by women. We got to do right by gays. Eventually, there is something. Yo, that George Floyd video, mm -hmm. everybody's empathy kicked in. Yeah. You can't be a fucking human with a soul and watch that video and not have empathy kick in and eventually be like, fuck no, we got to stop this shit. That shit yeah. happened to any human. Yeah, and I think I think what you're seeing is like, the outcry of support, I think, is also a reflection of, like, integration, right? Like, the internet has kind of made the world really small, and we've all we've all kind of, like, started appreciating each other and appreciating each other's culture. And you have a lot of white people, even through, like, TikTok dances, are really getting to know, like, fun, uh, <laughs> fun black things that might have never permeated their, like, super <laughs> white life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, true. Say, I mean that. Like, I mean, like, you see these, like, white girls doing these TikTok dances. That might never have entered their sphere 20 years ago. They might have nah. met. I really believe that. White that's, people have been stealing. Black yeah, people. I say they've been stealing our shit. You didn't see um, Bring It On? No. Say again? You didn't see Bring It On? Are you referencing <laughs> Bring It On, bro? <laughs> <laughs> she got a point, though. Like, that was that whole movie. So, was about, that whole movie was about colonization. <laughs> no, no. Bring It On. <laughs> <laughs> bring It On is all about colonization, bro. I'm telling you. I'm not questioning whether white people have taken uh, black culture, right? I think. Uh, that's not that's not what's up for grabs here. I'm thinking like now it's ubiquitous. Right? Now it's just like if something is popular, there were times where things could be popular in a white world and things could be popular in a black world. And now if it's popular, it crosses over. Now you've said this a lot, yeah. like because black culture is mainstream culture. Hip hop is pop culture. Or hip man. hip hop hip hop is pop culture, etc. And I think because of that, because there's so much familiarity, when you see that guy with a knee on his back of his neck and then he ends up dying at the hands of a cop and you there's so many young kids right now that grew up with black friends that maybe never grew up, grew up with black friends 40 years ago right, right they're like literally you're li okay go 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 no i was just gonna say they're literally you're literally looking at a generation of white kids who grew up with black people being their heroes yeah in, 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 in every aspect sure whether it's politics, Barack Obama. Sure, yeah. You know what I mean? It's a great point. Whether it's sports, it's the LeBron James, Kobe Bryant. Like, yeah. Whether it's music, it's, you know, the, the Drakes and the J. Coles and the kids. You have a whole generation of people where black people are their hero. Yeah. Like, like, no matter what race you are, you can point to a black person and that person has inspired you in some way, shape, or form. And this protest is a reflection of that. This protest Absolutely. is like, yo, these lives matter to me. They matter to me growing up. They matter to me now. And maybe it's time that we do something. And I think a lot of people at these protests do not know what the fuck to do. But they know that they want something to be done. And Just show up. Yo, but here's the thing. At, at eventually, <laughs> somebody's going to need to be the tip of the spear. And somebody's going to need to decide where that spear goes. And I hope I that think, happens sooner or later before too not, many people co-opt no, the shit I, and like I, make it about themselves. I think it's happening. I think it's you have too many grassroots grassroots organizations out there right now that have things on the table because it's starting with two things, right? It started with, to me, it started a couple of years ago when we all started asking for a black agenda because we're not going to act like police reform, criminal justice reform, all these things weren't in the black agenda. It's not like cops just started killing black people this last month. Yeah. Right? So all of this stuff has been going on. But now it just shows the urgency for it. Coronavirus showed the urgency for it because yeah. of all the underlying conditions in the black community left the black community so vulnerable, right? Uh, police brutality. Like it just shows the urgency for why you need police reform right now. And let's be for real, it's a fucking election year. Mm. The Democrats need black people. Mm. So it shows the urgency of why they need to be out here doing something for black folks. And I'm going to tell you all something else. There's no police reform getting passed in no time soon. This mm. shit is going to be on the table until well after November. Mm. Okay. And depending on who wins in November, it's going to be off the table all together. All right. Letting y'all know that right now. Don't think for one second that uh, the house, the house Democrats are going to get their justice for policing act bill passed anytime soon. Don't think that Tim Scott is going to get whatever his bill is called. I think his bill is named after Walter Scott, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure, but don't think that his bill is getting passed anytime soon. There is no major police reform happening anytime soon this shit is going to be a talking point up until november because let's be for real democrats had no other win that they that they had no other win the things that we were trying to get them to lean into was blackness 
We was trying to get Joe Biden to lean in the blackness and black issues and things that affect the black community. Now it's everybody's issue. So you don't even look like you're a leader. Mm-hmm. You're only like, 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 like you're a leader on it. Now it looks like you're just Pandering. following the trend and you can't even do that right. Yeah. <laughs> they ask him a simple question like, do you want it to fund the police? He's like, nope, I don't believe in the fund the police. In fact, we need to give police 300 extra million dollars the, 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 to reform the police and this and that. I'm like, yo, can y'all word this better for the old man, please? Yeah. Could you word it better for him? God damn. Can he answer it like Senator Harris answered it? Yeah. When she bodied it? Yes, you would love to take resources from this place and put them into this place. We have to go build up these communities because when you build up these communities, it will help decrease crime altogether. Like, yes. Yeah. Why? You can't answer that no better, Joe Biden. So all I'm simply saying is I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> that is not coming back. Police reform isn't coming back. That's where you're going. Oh, yeah. Police reform is not. <laughs> it's going it's to be on the table well after. Well, well after November. Oh, and that's the other point. I feel like. I don't want everything else black people have been asking for, at least, you know, me. Meaning like a black woman running me, um, he already committed to putting the black woman on the Supreme Court, a real comprehensive black agenda, Mm. you know, because I feel like, you know, you can't can't atone for the sins of America in regards to black people without legislation or uh, reparations. I don't want any of that to get lost because now people are focused on this cause because it almost makes Democrats uh, be able to tell black people to go out there and have a sense of urgency when it comes to voting because of just the police reform issue Mm. as opposed to all the other issues that we need. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Police reform is major. Don't get me wrong. It's a major, 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 major issue, but it allows them to not acknowledge everything else. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That one chip allows them to not have to acknowledge everything else. And I want everything acknowledged because even if you're talking about defunding the police, that's what you're talking about doing. Taking money from them to put back in our communities. That's what that whole economic justice plan, that's what that whole equity plan, that's what all of that is about when it comes to the black community. So let's keep all of that on the table too, God damn it. Mm. Okay? Let's not lose sight of that. I also want to salute, um, I want to salute Amanda Seals. Positively brilliant, even though we're past positively brilliant, because that was kind of like the deep dive. I want to just say it's positively brilliant that BET decided to have Amanda Seals host the BET Awards this year. I really wish that it wasn't virtual because I don't think y'all realize how much of a beast Amanda Seals is on stage. And I think that you need to go watch a smart, funny and black show. Go watch her host smart, Mm. funny and black Mm. the game show she does. And you can see how good she is on that stage singing dancing jokes crowd participation she's perfect to host an event like the BET Awards mm. so you know I, I wish I wish it wasn't virtual and I, I know she'll get the opportunity to host it you know on stage in front of people in a real way one day but I am so happy that freaking the BET Awards picked her to be the host. That shows me that they're paying attention because also if you're doing a virtual awards, if, if the awards are virtual this year, she's one of the biggest virtual voices out there. You know what I mean? So it makes sense. Mm. It, it, it makes sense to have her, you know, be, be the host this year. Cause she is, she, even now she does, she does smart, funny and black online. Mm. She's got one this Friday. She's got mm. one this Friday with uh, Dean Hardison and Daryl and Bell. Remember on the, you don't remember on a different world? It was on a different world together. No. Dwayne Wayne and his best friend. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Did you watch Different World? Yeah, I like Dwayne Wayne. <laughs> yeah, Dwayne, Wayne and, Dwayne Wayne and his best friend. Yo, um, yo, do you, do you have a butthole? What? Excuse me? Charlotte, do you have a butthole? Yeah, I got a butthole. Well, then this ad is for you. Talk to me. Breaking news. The biggest scam rocking the nation is toilet paper. If you got poo on your arm... Would you wipe it off with dry paper or would you wash it with water, Charlemagne? Which one? That bidet, baby. That bidet. bidet that, that bidet fire. Oh, you, you gotta never, love it. You don't it, know man. what it feels like to get that water squirted up your ass. Oh, it's the best, isn't it? It's the best, man. Spread them that. lips. Really the best. Shoot and then that when, you, when, you, when you let that water, when you let that water hit your ass and then you wipe it and it's like <laughs> nothing on the toilet tissue. Oh. Great A. It's just Ready amazing. 
It's absolutely amazing. And for years, bidets have been available, but you know what? They've been hideously expensive, causing thousands of dollars, okay? The Hello Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment is here to democratize the blessing bestowed by bidets and offer clean buttholes to everyone. Hello Tushy cleans your butt with a precise stream of fresh water for 79 bucks. That's it. It's an attachment. You don't have to buy a whole new toilet. You attach it to your existing toilet toilet okay save all that money on toilet paper you know there's no toilet paper available during a pandemic well you don't need it you can go bidet and then air dry if you want (laughs) okay spend some time in your phone texting let that booty hole dry and then take on the day so what you do okay is you go right now hello tushy bidet attachment it comes with 60 day risk free guarantee and 12 month warranty join millions of happy hello tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every flush go to hello tushy.com that's h-e-l-l-o-t-u-s-h-y.com slash idiots you get 10 percent off there's a special offer for our listeners only so go to hello tushy.com slash idiots 10 percent off let's get back to the show do we have any church announcements oh yo i'm back on the road I'm going and I'm for back it. on road. Let's go at theandrewschultz.com. End of the month, I'll be in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Then we got a bunch more dates uh, coming as well. So just go to uh, theandrewschultz.com and uh, some a lot of those rescheduled dates that we had to cancel earlier in the year are popping up as well. Go to my website, theandrewschultz.com. Kansas City, uh, it's limited room in these in these uh, comedy clubs and theaters. So make sure you just go get them tickets early. Um, yeah, again, theandrewschultz.com. Kansas City. Uh, improv, I believe. It's Kansas City Improv in Kansas City, Missouri. I'll see you at the end of the month. All right? All right. Uh, shit you won't care about next week. Um, Dave Chappelle comedy special, 846. I wouldn't call it a comedy special. Um, and the reason I wouldn't call it a comedy special is because I don't think Dave was trying to be funny. Right. I think that Dave wanted to vent. I think that Dave had some things that he wanted to get off his chest. Mm. Uh, he's not a social media user, so he's not on Instagram Live. Right. Um, he's not a, a huge interview guy. Like he's he'll do interviews, but he doesn't do them all the time. So he wasn't promoting anything. So he wasn't sitting down with anybody to have an interview. Right. He, he's not a podcast host, so he doesn't have a podcast. I think that Dave Chappelle wanted to get some shit off his chest, mm. and he he went to his platform, and his platform is that motherfucking stage. Yep. In his, in his backyard, I, I'm assuming that was in Ohio, right? I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So so he was home. In his backyard, and he gathered some of his people around, and he had a nice social distance show. Mm-hmm. And I think he wanted to get some shit off his chest for 27 minutes. I didn't. I, I that's that's how I looked at it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't sitting back like, oh my god, that was brilliant because I know I've seen Dave Chappelle be brilliant. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think that the whole context of what he presented to people, I thought that was brilliant. You know what I mean? Because I think it's dope not to run to go do an interview. I think it's dope not to run to go do a podcast. I think it's dope not to get on Instagram and rant. I like the fact that he used his stage. I'm a radio personality. If I got something I really want to get off my chest, I'm on that radio every day. Mm. If I'm a comedian and I got some shit I want to get off my chest, even if it's not jokes, even if it's not funny, I'm going to get on that stage. Because you know why? That's what gives it the most impact. I don't think a Dave Chappelle interview, I don't think a Dave Chappelle appearance on a podcast would have had the same impact as it being packaged as a Dave Chappelle comedy special. And and I I would have, I would have, I would have called it a Dave Chappelle, uh, verbal scream of consciousness Mm. word to Kanye West. You know what I mean? I would have called it a Dave Chappelle. That's what I call it. A Dave Chappelle verbal scream of consciousness. That's what that was to me. That's, that's a really interesting way to look at it because, uh, in terms of impact, because, you know, millions of people saw it online and maybe they wouldn't have seen it if it was an interview with The Breakfast Club or if it was an interview with you directly or if it was an interview with Rogan. Maybe it would have got a lot of views, but maybe not 20 million or whatever it did or 14, 15 million, et cetera. Um, and, we, you know, we were talking on the phone about this, or uh, I think it was a few days ago, because it's not a special. So you can't judge it as a special. People going, yo, it's no. not funny. It wasn't supposed to be funny. This no. is the most prolific comedian of alive today. In my opinion, he's the greatest comedian alive. Simple as that. Um, if you thought that this was his attempt to be funny, you're wrong. He knows how to be funny. He Easy. meant to deliver this. That Absolutely. being said, um, I know how, 
prolific Dave Chappelle is. I know how brilliant he is. I don't think he even needs to make you laugh. He's so fucking smart and so genius in the way that he synthesizes information and crunches into these digestible morsels in a way that you never thought about before. He's literally a genius. I didn't think that there was anything he said that there was that profound in it. I'll be honest. Like I didn't think he was offering new perspective. Like when I watched it, I, I wasn't blown away with the thinking based on a Dave Chappelle expectation. Like to me, when I hear Dave Chappelle talk, I'm like, I'm about to hear some of the most brilliant shit I could have never thought of because that's how genius he is. And then everything yeah. he th he said pretty much, maybe outside of like the Chris Dorner connection, everything he said, I think that we've heard a lot of people say, and that's okay too. He's allowed to share those feelings and we're allowed to be excited by our hero expressing the same feelings we have. That's totally fine. But when I saw people exalting and going, this was the most genius thing I've ever seen. I was like, have you not seen Dave Chappelle? Because if you've seen Dave Chappelle and you're familiar with his work, you don't think that this is close to as profound as other things he said. I agree. I think there is something to um, being able how to capture how people feel. Yep. You know what I mean? I think that's what that's what artists do with music sometimes, right? Like sometimes a record comes out in a moment and it's like, damn, yo, he captured or she captured exactly how I felt. I think Dave's the fact that we know Dave is so prolific, the fact that we know Dave can craft some of the, you know, most amazing, you know, thought thoughts in the world. I think the fact that he was up there so unrefined, mm. the fact that he was so emotional, mm. the fact that he didn't really have the answers, that he didn't have things figured out, that it, he did seem like it was a state of confusion. Mm. I, I think he captured how people felt. I think that's how a lot of people feel right now. I really do. I think, and I think yeah, it's, 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 it's almost like it makes you feel better when you see somebody who has it all figured out, not having it figured out. It gives you more space to be like, yeah, I am fucking confused. It gives you more space yeah. to be like, yeah, I am fucking angry. You know what I'm saying? It, it gives you the license to be that even more. I, I, I think so. That's a, and, um, that's a great way of looking at it. It's like with especially with music, because sometimes there's a song that don't have the best lyrics. Yeah. That don't have it doesn't even have the best beat. It doesn't even have the best production, but yeah. it captures how the fuck you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, we in an era right now where we're scripting everything down to the basics. Which there you is mean no more that? there is there is nothing refined about this moment. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing refined about this moment. So to see him up there with his notepad and just just going, yeah. I'm like, yeah, Dave. Like, I, I mean, honestly, I wasn't. Just, I, I was. I was highly entertained. You know, what I mean, I watched it once. I'm gonna watch it again. But I was. I was when I saw it. I was like, yeah. You know, what I'm saying like he captured a, a, the way I felt about a lot of things. You know, I mean, because like we we've had those conversations. I had that com that shit about Don Lemon or even talking about right. Le LeBron over exceeding expectations. Like those are conversations that we were having here. Right. Yeah. Um. I, I was shocked. I was shocked at uh, him, him coming at Candace Owens. Um, hmm. Only reason I was shocked is because that's a real, that's a real moon barks back at the dog moment. And I'm not, yeah. not, not calling Candace a dog at all. I'm just saying that there's an analogy yeah. that, that talks about the moon and the dog. And it says when the dog barks at the moon, it's nothing. But when a moon barks back at the dog, it's news. Right? Yeah. And so Dave Chappelle, first of all, Candace Owens is unstoppable. Unstoppable. And the reason I know she's unstoppable is because of the way she responded to what Dave Chappelle said. Mm. She said to Dave Chappelle, you, 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 you insert the clip, the Dave yeah, clip. Was, Candace said in a tweet, to every Democrat tweeting me the clip of Dave Chappelle insulting me, mm. I'm not a leftist. I have a sense of humor. And I think comedians should make fun of people. Dave Chappelle is one of the greatest comedians of all time. And I made it on and I made it into one of his specials. That's power. She's absolutely fucking right. And then the next one, the follow-up, was even crazier. I don't have that one. She Taylor says, say it to my face. She and, says, say that shit yeah. to my face, though. With, with a laugh, right? With a laugh, and, yeah. And, 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 and I don't know why I wrote about this in my book, Shook One, Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me. Learn from me, right? Because I told y'all back in the day when I tweeted that stupid-ass tweet, when I was like, you know, who are the woke women of color that we can empower and make a voice like Tommy mm -hmm. Lauren, right? When I said that dumb shit, right? Stupid, stupid, dumb of me to say, right? 
Because what I should have said is, who are the women and left Tommy out of it? Who are the women in this space that we can empower? Because all I was simply saying was, we empower people with our hate. Mm. We get online and we talk about how much we don't like these people. And then the people that like them come on defending these folks. And next thing you know, you got this perfect storm of just whoever that person is. And you think you're hurting them, but you're not. So when you're somebody like Candace Owens, who's like a goddamn, she's like black, they got the Black Panther suit on. The more you hit her, she absorbs the energy and she gets stronger and stronger. Dave made her so fucking strong. Can't stop her, bro. (laughs) The only way. Not only only way. Yeah, go, go, go. No, the only way you can stop a Candace Owens is to ignore her. Yes. Yes. But guess what? She's too good for you to ignore. Yeah. Her. <laughs> she knows how to antagonize, bro. She knows how to antagonize. She knows how to agitate, you. She's bro. Too, she knows how to agitate you. She knows what to say to get you going. Yeah. What's that shit? What what Will Pharrell say? I don't know what it is. <laughs> but it gets the people going. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. that's she, yeah. yo, she she has that thing. Yeah. And guess what? She puts it out there and y'all keep giving it back to her. And Dave. Dave immortalized her. Yeah, it's yeah, he, it's he did. He did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You would like to see Dave, because Dave has the intellect to chop her down. So you would like to see him chop her down. And then he just went with like a kind of easy joke about pussy. the pussy stinking. Yeah. And um Yeah, I know the thing with Candace is really interesting is because she doesn't have to be worried about being canceled because the side that's canceling her is not the side that pays her. You only got to be worried about being canceled by the people who pay you. Yo, you know what I mean? The side that's trying to cancel her is doing nothing but promoting her right. and marketing her. So they get, you know I mean? she's getting more money from the other side. Yes, man. And everybody loves a bad guy. So it's just like, yo, people root for the villain. So she's embraced yeah. that role. She's a villain to one side, a hero to the other. Well, she plays a really interesting part in the ecosystem because... She plays, she is a character that's been exalted by the right to remove white people, any, uh, remove any of white people's guilt or responsibility for what's happened to black people in black America. Yeah, absolutely. That's her goal and that's her position. She might truly believe the things that she says, but the people that pay her are using her like a toy. So yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. white people don't, don't want to feel bad about the black plight in America. So go, we're going to give you some facts and you're going to take these facts and you're going to go tell black America and white America that this is the real reason why black people are going through this, right? And the reason it's so effective is because the white people on the right that don't want to feel guilty go, oh, phew, it's not my fault. And then the, the, the white people on the left can't call her out for her privilege because she's of minority status too. So the white yeah, people yeah, have yeah. to listen to her or else they're silencing a black woman. So the white people on the left mm. got to take her for her word, not her identity. If I said any of the shit that Candace said, they'd be like, shut up, you're a white male, you don't know shit. But since she's a black woman, they got to sit there patiently and listen. And yeah. then if these people on the left are not disciplined in their arguments, she'll eat them the fuck up. And that's the thing, right? What you said about Dave Chappelle, you know, like Dave Chappelle's an intellect, you know, he's articulate. Like yeah. he can, he could break the Candace Owens thing down in a much more like scientific way, right? Yeah. When you hit her with the steak pussy thing, her audience is like, that's the best you got for Candace? Yep. Because even if you don't agree with the things that she's saying, which, you know, like when you, if you don't agree with the things that she's saying, you can't deny that she still has a, 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 a something, she's some thought behind it. She's giving it some thought, whether her facts are wrong, whether she's dead wrong. She's giving some she's giving some thought to it and she's yep. able to, to articulate it in a in an yep. intellectually sounding way. Republicans and right wing people will always have more sound arguments because they're arguing in a lot of times against progress. OK, So they'll always have more sound arguments because the thing they're arguing is harder. If you're saying affirmative action shouldn't happen, right? 
you better have some good fucking arguments as to why it shouldn't happen. I think, I think, I think, um, I, I, I think that. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Whereas yeah, I the think left, it's like facts, it's facts versus feelings sometimes. Exactly. But, yep. Yeah. Go. Go. If I'm a black person in America, yeah. If you're a a a, a, a white privileged person, you would never know how I feel. If you're a gay person, 100%. if you're a gay, if you're if, if you're any person that's ever been oppressed, marginalized, woman, gay, black. I don't care how many facts you as a white privileged man spit at me. Yeah. You can't tell me how the fuck I feel because whether it's statistically or just my everyday life, I know what it is I go through. But here's the thing. What they do is they get someone that looks just like you to tell you how you feel. And, they, and they your tell feelings me that, that, are that, that wrong. I'm bugging. Exactly. And that's why yeah, they got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. black sheriff from Wisconsin, wherever he's from. They, yeah. Uh, I forgot. David something. David Whatever. Clark, so they'll get some guy that looks like you to tell you you're wrong. Right. And you the know, he don't fuck with the right no more. Say again? He don't really fuck with the right no more. Look, I don't know where he is, but I understand. Yeah. And again, I'm not saying these people are lying or insincere or inauthentic. What I'm saying is the people that promote them have a reason for promoting them. Yes. Does that make sense? Oh, listen, I, I had somebody tell me verbatim. I'm not going to put the executive. Slide your computer there. a little bit that way. So you're in the middle. Oh, yeah, that's better. That, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to put the executive's name out there, but I had somebody tell me that. Um, at Fox News, they will tell a black personality, "I'll make you a star." Oh yeah! If you're if you're willing to go MAGA, whoa! If you're willing to go MAGA, I'll make you a star, dude. So, a lot of these people are just doing it for profit. So a hundred percent. 100% yeah, because yeah, yeah, they yeah. need the voices to quiet, right? And the Democrats do this too, but they don't do it with people of color. The Democrats do it with kids. Explain. So if there's, a, if there's a, uh, an issue that's important to Democrats, they let kids argue it. For example, the environment is really important to Democrats. Who's the big environmentalist uh, person? Leonardo DiCaprio? Nope. Well, Greta Thunberg. Oh. Right? Gun rights. Uh, or I get know who that is. Uh, Greta Thunberg is that Swedish chick that they sail all around the world and she's super like, uh, we got to take care of the environment, right? Okay. Uh, Anti-gun people, you know, Democrats are very anti-gun. Who makes all the arguments for anti-gun stuff? Uh, Kids from Parkland. The Parkland kids. You have kids make your arguments because the philosophy is if you're telling a kid to shut up, then you're an asshole. So you're not going to look at the kid and tell them to shut up, especially if they're an actual victim of gun violence, Right. Now, if you're a right wing dude telling a kid to shut up, we're like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? How rude are you? You're a piece of shit. So you always want to put the figure out there. It's a proxy war, right? You always want to put the figure out there that can't be argued effectively or shut down effectively by the other side. Well, I wonder, let's dissect that a little bit, right? I yeah, wonder break it down. if um I wonder if 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 I don't think that's by design. I think that every every movement or every bit of change that has ever happened in this country has been led by young people. You know what I'm saying? And when you have the Parkland shooters who have been through what they've been through, they adopt that cause. You know, like every like every there's, there's not a movement in America that wasn't led by the youth. Martin Luther King wasn't young, though. Like Malcolm yes, he X was not. He wasn't a kid. He was young as fuck. He was about, Martin Luther King died at what? Thirty nine. Son, that's not Parkland. Kids are 16 years old. There's a no, difference between 16 and 39. Not now. Parkland kids got to be in their 20s. Probably older. Yeah, but they started becoming activists post Parkland when they were still in high school. And Martin started young. That's my. That's what I'm saying. Martin, let me see how old Martin, Martin was. He was 39 when he died. Yeah. Yeah, he 39 was 39 when, he, when died. he died. So that's. But he started when like 25 or so. Like. No, he was younger than that. Younger. There's a difference between being 25 years old and being a minor. And if you're using minors as, and please poke holes, by the way, but if you're using minors to uh, push out, you know, the narrative or your agenda, it's, you're doing it on purpose. You think that there's value in it. And you think that this messaging can get across way better and way more effectively with younger people because less people will scrutinize them. They'll be like, oh, well, here's a well-intentioned kid trying to make change in the world. Instead of if you're 25 years old, they're like, well, your arguments aren't actually that sound and you're actually not making sense. Sense. Yeah, he started. They said he started around 1955. I don't. Somebody do the math. But yeah, I mean, listen, I, I don't disagree with you. I just think that a lot of these movements are started by the youth, right? So I, I and I really don't think Democrats be having a choice. You know what I'm saying? I think that when you're a progressive and you're leaning towards the left, especially when they say that they went too far left, that's what these kids want. 
these kids want radical fucking change and they don't feel like the moderate Joe Biden's and Amy Klobuchar's, even the president Obama's are giving it to them. You know, what's funny is that like the Democrat party is this, is the party of progress, is the party of change, is the party of youth. But every time I see Democrats, they're a hundred years old. Nancy Pelosi Disgusting. is 200 years old. Chuck Schumer is a hundred years old. Joe Biden Disgusting. is a thousand years old. So it's Disgusting. like, how are you this? How are you the party of progress and change? Are you really the party Disgusting. of progress and change? Or are you the party that likes to sell the idea of it's progress disgusting. and change? No, it's disgusting. It's disgusting simply because after President Obama, the Democratic Party was supposed to get younger, blacker, browner, more diverse when it comes to gender. Like, yes, like I, I, I am, I, I am highly upset that we didn't get a, a, a woman president. You know, even if it was Hillary Clinton, I don't give a fuck. I just think that that would have, that would, that would have really shown how America was was progressing. But boy, that black president scared the shit. Don't think for one second that black president didn't scare the shit out of both sides. All right. Both <laughs> sides? A, it, yes. Hell yes. It was like, man, fuck that. Who is the oldest candidates we got? Run him. <laughs> right? Run him. Run those old horses, goddammit. Joe, get Joe the fuck out of there. Okay? Get Joe the fuck out there and get him going. We got to get old Joe going. We need old and white as the standard bearer in America. Yeah. All right? Fuck that. All right, we're going to take a break for a second. Uh, pay some bills. Charlotte, you got your hair coming in, right? You see me. Look at that. Oh, okay. You see me. Okay. At Monistat 7 in Jamaican Castor Oil, Tiffany Haddish told me to use. We out here. Yeah, see, what you need to do is get that, you got that hymns, bro. You got to get that hymns. You got to go to fourhims.com if you want that full head of hair. That's F O R H I M S dot com. Uh, you can start out with a free online visit. You go to fourhims.com. Now, listen, they have prescription products uh, that are subject to doctor approval and they require an online consultation. But I'm telling you, you want that full head of hair. This works. I've been on the same active ingredients that's in Hims uh, for probably a decade right now. You see me, I got a beautiful full head of hair. And uh, let's be honest, ladies are shallow, okay? Are you not? You like a full head of hair in your men? Yeah. You do. Listen, it's okay, okay? We like a full uh, titty of titty. <laughs> <laughs> we like that as well so um you got to go to four hams guys it's the number one cause of uh aging to be honest in men if a guy has a full head of hair you're like yo he's aging well and if he doesn't have a full head of hair you're like yo he's aging poorly so just go to four hams.com f-o-r-h-i-m-s.com slash idiots okay you do that you go to four hams.com slash idiots and you get that trial all right, you see the website for full details, safety information. This could cost hundred dollars if you went to the person or the doctor's office or a pharmacy, but it doesn't because you're going to fourhims.com/idiots. Go get that right on now, and you can try it with a free online visit. Remember that you could start it out with a free online visit. Fourhims.com/idiots. Go check that out. Let's get back to the show. Yeah, I guess we can end. Um, uh, I guess we could do Ask an Idiot. You want to do Ask an Idiot? Yeah. Because we kind of did the deep idiots. dive already, huh? Yeah. Taylor, you got any asking idiots? Yeah. Um, you're, you guys didn't want to talk about like T-Mobile going out or Chris Rock with the braids? Nothing? Nah. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Or the B. No. Simone? No? Okay. No. All right. Well. Nah. Why, don't we, uh, to, for, why don't we do Ask an Idiot? Okay. So for Ask an Idiot, this goes to Casper Revenge. Casper's Revenge. What's the most disgusting thing you've learned about Hollywood? The most disgusting thing that you've learned about Hollywood. That's interesting, um, Sharla. That's a good question. I mean, honestly, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't learned anything disgusting unless you want to call the fact that you just have a bunch of culturally clueless people in these executive positions. That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't even give a fuck about that anymore because... Everybody is taking their destiny in their own hands. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like, like I love, and I've, I'm on record, I, I've, I love what Andrew Schultz does. I love what Amanda Seals does. I love what Lil Duval does. I love, you know, seeing people make their own independent films and movies. I love what the read is built with their podcast. Like, there is nothing that you can't create on your motherfucking own. And then guess what happens? These companies want to do JVs. <laughs> meaning, joint, meaning, meaning joint ventures yeah okay and you know what there's nothing wrong with doing that joint venture but when you do a joint venture you're an owner now yes you know what i'm saying you got equity in your shit you're a boss you know you at the table as a, a ceo and a, a founder so mm -hmm. i don't you know think anything is disgusting about hollywood other than the fact that 
they just have a bunch of culturally clueless people in these boardrooms. I haven't seen um, all of the stuff that YouTube and Worldstar have been telling me for years. I haven't seen no goats get sacrificed. I haven't seen anybody eat a baby sandwich. Okay, uh, you know, I haven't had seen anybody had to bust their asshole open for a roll. You know what I mean? I haven't seen any of that. Those Illuminati rituals y'all have talked about. So, yeah, no. I think he said it perfectly, man. Nothing I can, uh, <laughs> nothing I can say to top that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, this goes for both of you guys too. For I Z the King, um, what is your greatest mistake? Ooh, that's an interesting one. What is your greatest mistake? Sharla, what is your greatest mistake? Career-wise, life-wise? I've made so many of them. I don't know. I don't hmm. I don't know which one is my greatest. Um I do like that phrasing though. I like the phrasing of uh greatest mistakes cuz I don't like to say what are my worst mistakes. I like to say greatest mistakes cuz I really do feel like mistakes make you greater. Yeah. So I think when you make great mistakes, you know, um you become a greater person you become a greater individual you know it just teaches you how to bounce back from certain things or you learn from certain mistakes and it just makes you a better person you know? right so i welcome i welcome all my mistakes all of them i love I, I i embrace them actually yeah it's a really it's a really tricky question because like if you accept that good and bad things happen and that they're not necessarily good or bad. They just, this is just life and that's just what this is, what it is. Um, it's what you do about those mistakes and I'm happy where I am. So all those mistakes led me to this point right here and I'm happy where I am right here. So it's hard for me to go, man, I wish I didn't do that because if I didn't do that, maybe I wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, you know, absolutely. so it's, it's really tough. What there's a difference between, uh, oh, we were talking about this. We were breaking this down. Al, remember we were having that conversation. It was like, it was like a difference between like regret and um there's another word that's kind of like regret remorse, like remorse? remorse yeah regret and remorse where it's like if you're not happy where you are in life you have regrets if you are happy where you are you have like maybe like remorse, remorse or like embarrassment you're like ah man that was really embarrassing that i did that but for whatever reason i got here and i'm really happy here so i don't have regrets does that make sense I might yeah, have just confuse yeah, this whole question. You, no, 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 no. You're absolutely right. I don't have I don't have regrets. I do have remorse. Meaning, like, I have remorse just for being successful because <laughs> uh, so many people from where I'm from aren't. Yeah, you feel guilty so, about it. Yeah, whatever, so yeah. many people that I grew up with, so many people that I love, you know, they 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 they're not. Yeah, so it's like for me, like I, I I do have that survivor's remorse. Shit, I got remorse now. Um. Over jazz, over jazz fly. You know what I yeah. mean? I was listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes. I was watching Bishop T.D. Jakes this weekend, man, and he wasn't even talking about death. And he had this bar that kind of just put me in a better place. Play, play, play that clip, Taylor. I want you to insert this clip. Perhaps we will not make the journey. Perhaps we will not go on. Because the secret of mourning is this. Whenever people are weeping, always remember, they think they are weeping for who they lost. But in reality, they are weeping for themselves. There's a part of mourning that is laced with self-pity. Why could you do this to me? Why did you take her away from me? Why did you let this happen to me? Mourning always is laced with self-pity. It has a tinge of selfishness. And if you want to pull it out by the root, you have to recognize that part of our weeping is for ourselves and not for who we lost. Because in many, many cases, who we lost is through with suffering and agony and pain. And we wanted them to stay with us, even if it hurt them. And then they left us and we are mourning. He was just saying how when you're mourning over somebody, a lot of it is self-pity with a tinge of selfishness. Mm. because you're saying why would that person leave me mm. you know or why why would that person i don't know if he said do that to me but it basically was like it, it, you're making it, like it about yourself you're making it about you yes right but the reality is that person is not in pain anymore you know what i'm saying the reality is that person is is in a better place you know whatever hurt that person was experiencing that person is not feeling that anymore, as yeah. far as we know. As far as we know. Right? Yeah. So 
Yeah, like you know, I, I get so yes, that's that you ha- you have that you have that you have that remorse, like you know, especially when something when somebody is dealing with something that's out of their control. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense. It's like you still feel remorse. You still feel still like feel embarrassment over things. But if you're happy where you are, it's hard for you to feel regret because you know that those events in a weird way led you here. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Rest in peace, Jazz. Too. Yeah. R.I.P. Man. Her funeral is um her service is on her her going away service is uh June twenty seventh. That's actually my daughter's born day. Mm. My oldest daughter's born. Her, her home going service is June 27th. Her oh. mother and her father and her sister and her brother. Last week was rough. Yeah. The boy the weekend was rough. I didn't I didn't I didn't get any good sleep until Monday night. Monday mm. night and last night I slept well. Friday, I couldn't I didn't even get up to go to breakfast club. Friday I was like, man, fuck this shit. I canceled everything. I was supposed to do a one-on-one interview with somebody Friday. I canceled that. I was supposed to do Aaron Burnett CNN Friday. I canceled that. Like, I didn't mm. want to do nothing this weekend. Like I was really, 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 really out of it. Yeah. And this weekend I feel a little bit better. You know, like talking to her mom and talking to her dad. You know, and and you know they they of course they got their ups and they got their downs. But when they feel good, it makes me feel a little bit better. Yep. But just what Bishop TD Jake said Sunday, it really hit home because, mm. you know. Jasmine was dealing with something that was totally out of her control. Yep. And it's it's nothing you can do about that. You know, yep. when, when it's not I on you. Last, it's not on you. Like I said last week on the podcast, when your brain is your greatest gift and it can also be your greatest curse. Yep. Yeah. And when 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 that when that goes out of whack, it's ain't tough. no blowing on it like a Nintendo cartridge and nope. getting it back the way it needs to be. No. Nope. So, ain't that a fact. So take yeah, care of your brains, everybody, man. Maybe that's a good, man. maybe that's a good uh, place to wrap yeah. this up. Invest in your mental goddamn wealth. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Jasmine Waters. All right, Pete. Um, yeah, that's it, man. All right, brother. Take us out, man. Yo, 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 yo. As always, if you listen to this <laughs> podcast and you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.